Dave, superintendent's report. Thank you so much, President Miller. So I want to start by thanking Donlin Elementary School for their creative artwork. What did I say, Hello. Miller? <laughs> but, you know, whatever. I look, um, I look like him. That's okay. Oh, well, wow. It's one of those weeks, I got to tell you. I want to start by thanking first uh, uh, President Maher for his amazing service as president of the board, but more importantly, all the Donlin kids and teachers for supporting um, us by sending up artwork to be displayed here in the boardroom in the lobby tonight. So if you, did, if you get a chance, um, take a peek around. It's always fun to see the great artwork that our kids produce. It's been a busy and an exciting few weeks. Last week, our, our friends at PPIE hosted the 2022 uh, POSD State of the District event at the Firehouse Art Center. I was very pleased to have the opportunity to address the community and share about all the great things that are happening here in POSD. At the end of the event, we distributed the 2022 annual report. There's a physical copy here. Um, it's jam-packed full of information and a whole lot of great pictures. Um, but if you'd like to see that, you can also see a flip uh, page version of it on the district's website. So go, go there if you'd like to see that. Earlier today, I was pleased to host the Chamber of Commerce's Leadership Pleasanton program on their annual ed education day, which is the first time they've been together since uh, pre-pandemic year, so 2019. It's great to connect with a diverse group of community leaders and share information about the exciting things that are happening across the district, including those things made possible by the generosity of our community through Measure I-1 and Measure I soon to come. We've had some time, they, they, we had some time today to tour the district office campus so they could better understand the current state of the facilities and why future plans include the rebuilding of Village High School. Um, we were grateful that the rain kind of held off for that tour, didn't held, hold off for the other tours though, so some folks got wet today. We then visited Football, Foothill High School's CTE building, which the newest section is currently under construction. You can see it as you drive down uh, Foothill um, Boulevard in front of the school. And it's anticipated that that facility designed and envisioned by the teachers there at the school site and our CTE uh, department, um, that building will be open hopefully after the summer. So it'll welcome kids at the beginning of the, the coming school year. It really is a creative uh, space. Um, and again, it's a really, really great example of what happens when you give teachers the opportunity to dream and tell you what they need, and then we just figure out a way to get it done, and they helped us do that. And so, a uh, great job, Foothill team. Um, after the visit to Foothill, we were able to walk through the new science classrooms at, at Hart Middle School. They opened uh, just the other day, um, and we're pretty, it was pretty cool to see the um, see the kids in the classrooms, the sixth graders were in the classroom, some of the classrooms were not using, uh, the teachers were not using them yet, they're still moving stuff in. Um, and that was, it was a little funny aside, I think, is talking to one of the sixth grade science teachers and he had moved the, the kids and the furniture into the classroom and, you know, he had all the furniture up towards the teacher's desk in the front and there was this big 25 foot space in the back of the room and I said, what? Well, what, what are you going to do with all that space? He said, I'm trying to figure that out. I'm used to having everybody close. And so he's thinking really hard about how to use all this great space that's been given to him in that new building. So again, they're very appreciative of that building and the community was very impressed with the uh, quality of the construction. We then, the, the, final, the final stop for the group is we went to the new district office building on West Las Positas and we toured that facility. So they were the first group of folks from the uh, the community to be able to tour that facility, so it was a fun preview for them. And then we ate lunch there in Ed D'Alazzo's um, uh, future office. <laughs> that was kind of funny. As you know, this past November, the Pleasanton voters passed Measure I-1. And we talk, uh, when we talk about public funds entrusted to us by the Pleasanton voters, accountability and transparency for our community are important aspects of that work. During the campaign, we were, uh, there were community members who raised concerns about various issues, including the size and the timing of the bond, the project list, and the specific language that was used on the ballot. Now that we've shifted from the election, the campaign phase, to the implementation phase, the accountability structures will be critical for maintaining the public trust. An important part of that stru structure we've already talked a little bit about tonight includes the work of the Citizens Bond Oversight Committee. 
Several members we recognized earlier this evening are exiting, which means we have a need to fill those chairs on the committee. So I want to, again, reiterate my personal gratitude to the Citizens Bond Oversight Committee members who have served their six-year terms. You guys did an amazing work getting us started and moving us forward. But to ensure accountability for spending the funds coming forward, um, there are three spots, or do we have four? There might be four spots on that committee, three from retirements and one from a resignation earlier in the year. And we need to add new members. So I'm encouraging interested members of the community who might have interest in time to apply to serve on, on the CBOC. Um, and consider, if not you, do you have other like-minded individuals who you think would be good for the committee? And so that information and a link to the application is available on our website. We're on a tight time frame to get those, those processes through. So. Give it a thought, and if you're interested, we'd love to have you be a part of that, uh, that group. And if you don't end up being a member of the committee, the, the meetings are always publicly noticed, and so feel free to stop by and listen to that group as they talk about the processes related to the bond. And that's my report tonight. Thank you, Dr. Hagelin.